In this video, I'm going to show you how you can learn algebra from the very beginning. So if you don't know any mathematics, how can you actually get started with algebra and learn algebra on your own? And we're going to work our way up to algebra that you don't even learn in school. Like it's so advanced that it's typically not even taught in schools, at least in the U.S. It's taught in other countries, but in the U.S. in terms of like, you know, you go to college, you get a four-year degree, you're probably not going to see this type of math. And we're going to talk about that near the end of the video, which is a little bit more advanced. So let's start with the very beginning. So for people who are just getting started, there are two books I think that are widely available. They are inexpensive and they are very good. The first one is Everything You Need to Ace Pre-Algebra and Algebra 1 in One Big Fat Notebook. And this is a book that I've talked about before on my Math Sorcerer YouTube channel. So if you've subscribed to that channel, Perhaps you've seen the video on this book. It's the complete high school study guide, it says. Now, if you're not in high school, don't let that deter you, right? This book is excellent for anyone who wants to learn algebra. It's got really, really fun pictures, good explanations. It's an excellent book. It's published by Workman Publishing, and they have other books as well. I have a few other books that they make. I have their one on computer science as well, which is excellent. So definitely worth it if you are just like, you know, getting back to it. For example, maybe you didn't even finish high school. Maybe you dropped out and you want to get started with algebra. This is a good choice for you. Or maybe you're in high school and you want to supplement, or maybe you're going to college and you just don't remember. So this book has everything you need from the very beginning, and it will help you learn basic algebra. Another really good choice, which I believe is still widely available. This might be an older edition. I'm not sure. This is Forgotten Algebra. It's got a really cool name. A self-teaching refresher course. Here it says, this is a self-pacing text workbook that can help you recapture the algebra that got away. If you're a high school or college student planning to take SAT1, GRE, or GMAT, this book will help you bring your math skills up to where they should be. If you're a business student, you'll find it a useful supplement to statistics and calculus courses. Here's a program you can complete at your own pace over the course of a school semester. I like that they're being realistic. You know, you're not going to be able to sit down in one night and work through this unless, unless of course, you've had some math in the past. You would be surprised how quickly the forgotten algebra returns to you. I always think that mathematics, learning mathematics, once you learn it and you forget it and you come back to it, it's kind of like muscle memory. You know, if you if you work out in the gym and you stop working out and then you start up again, your gains come quicker because you have that that previous muscle memory that they call it. So I think there's something similar with mathematics. You have that mathematics mind memory. Like if you've done math in the past, it seems easier to recall old math than it does to learn new math. You can see it has all the steps. It's got spaces where you can actually work through the problem, then it gives you the answer there, which is priceless. So a great workbook for someone getting started. So these two books, I think, are perfect. I'd recommend getting both if you're trying to, you know, get started with, with basic algebra. By the way, I'll leave links to everything in the description uh, in case you uh, have trouble finding these online or something. But worth buying. I bought them both. I bought this one new. Um, so yeah, very happy with it. All right, so after you know some basic algebra, and so maybe you already know some basic algebra, and you're thinking, I already know basic algebra, I want something a little more advanced. So that would lead me to this book here. This is College Algebra by Blitzer, and this is the Essentials version. So this version has the Essentials. So what does that mean? This version has what's typically taught in a college level, college algebra course. So I've taught college algebra, uh, I taught it for so many years, and we covered exactly what's in this version. If you have the regular College Algebra book by Blitzer, it has extra sections, which I'll show you. I'll show you really quickly. You could start here. So if you feel like you know some algebra, I say start here. I do think, I'm not saying those other books I showed you were bad, but I think this is a better investment because this book has more math, right? This book has way more math than those other two books I showed you combined. Um, it's just better, right? It's more advanced. Uh, it's college level mathematics. Let me just briefly find the contents here so I can show you. I think I skipped over it. Here we go. So it starts with equations and inequalities, complex numbers, 
So this is typically covered in a college level course. So if you go to college and you take college algebra, this is what you're going to cover. So this is typically the first test you would take in college would be on chapter one. And typically the second test would be on chapter two. And then a third test, maybe chapter three. And the fourth test would be chapter four and chapter five together. So typically that's how it's done. Um, so four test, test one, chapter one, test two, chapter two, test three, chapter three, and then the fourth test, the last two chapters. Then you typically have a final exam. Whereas these sections here, matrices and determinants, conics, conic sections, all of this stuff is typically taught in a pre-calc course. Now, when I took college algebra as a college student, I actually covered matrices and determinants, which was uh, kind of interesting. Um, my teacher decided to cover that. So it's, it's optional. Note, note that these are available in the regular version. Um, so you might be wondering, why didn't I show you the regular version? I own the regular version of, of this book, I actually own the instructor's edition, but the regular version is more expensive, like brand new. This book, and I'm pretty sure there's a newer edition, this is an old edition, is less expensive. So if you get the essentials version, um, you can save money. But then you're missing those topics. So that leads me to the next book. So maybe you already feel like you know plenty of algebra. Here we have what's called a pre-calculus book. I used to have this friend on the internet. We used to chat all the time in a math chat room in the early 2000s. Uh, he was a really cool guy. He was a math major from the University of Waterloo. And he was a genius. And he always had a problem with the name pre-calculus. He would say, what in the heck is pre-calculus? Why do they even call it that? You know, it's basically algebra and trigonometry. So a lot of books titled pre-calculus basically are titled algebra and trigonometry. This one's written by James Stewart rather than Watson. James Stewart was a very famous mathematician. He was a Canadian mathematician. He passed away several years ago. He was a millionaire. Uh, from He became a millionaire from writing his famous books. In particular, his book Calculus is super famous. It's an awesome book, and it's still used today. And this book is still used today in colleges. So this book would be used to teach like a pre-calc course or a trig course. Again, a worthy investment in my mind, this book, because of the knowledge it contains. And it has a lot of the same topics that um, you saw in the other books, but it's a little more in depth. Like some of the exercises are harder, some of the examples are harder. So fundamentals, functions, so very similar to the college algebra book. Polynomial and rational functions, exponential and logarithmic functions. So stuff we saw earlier in the college algebra book by Blitzer. Then you've got trig functions, so it's got trigonometry as well. So this will prepare you for calculus. Okay, and then systems of equations and inequalities, some geometry, so these are conic sections, sequences and series, and then counting and probability. So very, very similar to the Blitzer book. By the way, these books all have answers, at least to the odd numbered problems. So they make a great choice for self-study. So in my view, this book here, this pre-calc book and the college algebra book by Blitzer are a better purchase than the other two books I showed you at the beginning. But if you need to start from the beginning, you definitely want to get uh, you know, one of those first two books I recommended, which were um, this one here. So if your math is really weak, you know, if it's really bad, <laughs> get this, okay? Uh, don't, don't just jump into the college algebra books. Typically, students who take uh, courses in college algebra in college, they struggle a lot. Um, when I took it, I struggled a lot. I ended up getting, I think, a B in the class. And it was just so difficult for me to learn logarithms. I struggled. Um, I just had a really hard time. So maybe start with one of these two if, you know, if your math is really rusty and it's been like a long time since you've had math. So after you get through all of these books, it's time to really get into some fun. And here we have two other books which are not used in the United States of America today. They're both called Higher Algebra. These books are used in India. I'm pretty sure these are used in India because... Uh, these books uh, were referenced multiple times on my other YouTube channel, The Math Sorcerer. People would leave comments uh, and ask me about these books, people from India. And apparently these books are used there. And I think that's amazing because these books are super hardcore. So this is an old book. Uh, this book actually came from India. I bought this from India. It was shipped from India. I'll leave a link uh, in the description to a reprint. This is a reprint as well. This is not the original. It's Higher Algebra by Bernard and Child. And I'm sorry, I just got to smell it because it has an intoxicating smell. Just, oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. It's probably not good for me, but it smells really good. And it's just got a lot of advanced mathematics that you're not going to see uh, in college. You can get a math degree in a university in the United States, and 
a lot of this mathematics you won't see. This is really old school. Notice how small the lettering is, like the symbols. Even though it's small, this is called the enlarged version, <laughs> large edition. Yeah, so it's got all kinds of weird stuff, continued fractions. It actually has calculus in it. So really interesting if you're looking for like tricky and challenging algebra problems. You could probably find problems in here and like show them to your teacher and your teacher won't be able to solve them because this book is ridiculous. Um, then there is the legendary Higher Algebra by Hall and Knight. This is an original copy. It's not a reprint, but it's certainly not the first edition. A sequel to Elementary Algebra for Schools. These are old British books, by the way. Pretty sure. See, Cambridge. H.S. Hall, formerly scholar of Christ's College, Cambridge. Wow. S.R. Knight, formerly scholar of Trinity College, Cambridge. Very, very fancy. 1960, London. Yeah, and very similar to um, the Bernard and Child book, right? So very, very similar. Similar style. Plenty of extremely challenging exercises. Uh, it's kind of like one of those fun books. I'll try to find this one. Uh, if I find a reprint, I'll leave it. It's harder to find affordable old copies. Uh, an old copy of the Bernard and Child, I haven't been able to actually find one. I've only been able to find reprints. So probably because they're books from, you know, the UK, I believe. And so they're hard to get in, in the US. So those are some books that you can use to start from the beginning. Again, starting from the very beginning, you would, you would want to use one of these books here, Pre-Algebra and Algebra 1 or, you know, Forgotten Algebra. These are great for beginners. And then the Blitzer book, the Essentials version will save you money. Uh, and it covers everything that's typically covered in a college algebra course in college. And the pre-calc book covers everything that's covered. This is the one by Stuart. Everything that's covered uh, in a pre-calc course and a trigonometry course in college. So from the very beginning to the very advanced, old school, British style, higher algebra books by Bernard and Child and Hall and Knight. Those are classic books that contain um, topics that you know, they have continued fractions in there. Ramanujan was famous for some of the things he discovered in continued fractions, and you can learn about them in these books on higher algebra. Um, I also recommend a timer. So this is a timer that I use. I use this for multiple things. Um, I used to use it for my laundry. I no longer use it for my laundry, and I like it. Uh, it's simple. There's certainly more fancy timers. My phone has a timer. Everyone's phone has a timer, right? But this... You just set it and forget it, right? And then when the time runs out, you're done. And I think um, it's perfect for, it does beep. I don't know if you can hear it, but it does beep. My microphone has noise canceling, so you might not be able to hear the beeping. Let me just, maybe you can hear it now. Not sure if you can hear it, but yeah. So great for self-study. It uses uh, one battery, I believe. Yeah, one AA battery, got an Amazon Basics battery in there. And I use it for studying. I use it for uh, for doing stuff. Like if I wanna make uh, some videos uh, for YouTube or I wanna work on some mathematics just for self-study, I like to do some math first thing in the morning. So I'll sit down for an hour, 30 minutes and just work on some math, maybe read. And this makes sure that I don't overdo it and I don't underdo it. So it's just a nice way to time your sessions. It's not necessary, uh, but it helps. And I've had it for a long time. I'll leave a link in the description. This is my calculator, the one I use. There are certainly newer ones and better ones. This one is really famous because um, it doesn't have a computer algebra system. So if you're taking a class in college or high school, your teacher will probably let you use this one. Whereas if you use a TI-89 or a TI-Inspire, those have computer algebra systems. So they actually do algebra for you, but teachers typically won't allow them. That's why this specific model, by the way, became so popular in the US. It's because teachers don't allow the other models. Um, so it's kind of weird, right? Kind of weird that uh, because teachers in general have a certain feeling, uh, a certain calculator became popular versus other calculators. Kind of weird, kind of an interesting thing. Personally, I don't care what calculator students use. It's just, you know, it doesn't really matter to me, but a lot of people do care. So something to keep in mind. Um, very well made. I've had it for years. It's, it's a beast. And then pencils, you need pencils to do math. These are my favorite pencils. I've been using these and uh, this is almost a brand new pack. I've also been using these. These are just another brand, Papermate. Not as good as these. Ticonderoga, the world's best pencil. Awesome. And then paper. I like to use paper with no lines. It kind of frees my mind. Uh, the smartest guy I ever knew, 
he he didn't use lines on his paper. And I remember studying with him, and he was the first person I ever studied with that ran circles around me. And he had the paper with no lines. I thought, I'm gonna do what he does, you know, because you know, learn from people who are better than you. So he was better than me, and so I decided to use paper with no lines, and, and here I am with paper with no lines. So I think it helps. And basic non-electric, non-fancy, super affordable, old school pencil sharpener. Um, that way you don't have to plug it in. So if you're out in the woods and you're doing math or you lose power and you have some homework due and your teacher's not flexible, you can still light a candle and work on your physics or math homework. I've actually done that. So that's a true story. Anyways, rambling on forever about mathematics. I can talk forever about algebra. This video is about algebra and I hope this video has helped you. You can also take courses on algebra, there's all kinds of courses you can take. Um, there's courses on you know different websites, uh, Khan Academy. I've never used Khan Academy, but I'm, I'm not promoting it or anything, but you could check that out. Um, that was one of the first, Khan Academy was one of the first YouTube channels to do math. Um, and then there's um, Udemy. I, I have courses on Udemy. Obviously I want you to you know buy my courses, that'd be better. Uh, there's links in the description, or you can check out uh, mathsorcerer.com and just use my links. Otherwise, uh, Udemy takes a huge cut. So they're really cheap. Uh, the courses are not expensive at all. So, and they go on sale all the time. Um, so, yeah. So those courses are good because they give you some structure. But as much as I want you to buy my courses, I think books are better. <laughs> so <laughs> I think books are better. And again, I'll leave links in the description to all of these. And if you're going to buy a book, I would recommend like if you don't know where to start and you feel like you know some math get the blitzer book or get the pre-calc book by stewart these are college level textbooks so they are way more significant than the two beginner books i showed you only get those if you really feel like you want to learn from the very very beginning and then only get the higher algebra ones if you feel like you know maybe you already have a math degree or maybe you're just a curious student and you want some you know tricky algebra problems you'll definitely find them there Anyways, I wanted to keep this video short and I did not. And make sure to, uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out other videos here on Epic Algebra. Until next time, good luck, take care, and keep doing math.